the opening speech by Lydia is about what the show is about, which is how history forgets some people and it remembers others. For history isn't written by the feeble masses. Liddy is just teeing up that this is going to be a story about the losers, <laughs> which I think is a much more interesting story. Really, it's a question we're exploring throughout. You know, who gets to tell the story of Watergate and who gets to tell Martha Mitchell's story? The infamous mouth of the South. Martha Mitchell. Martha Mitchell, in her day, she was a conservative superstar. And the tragedy of Martha Mitchell is that she wasn't remembered at all because people like her don't write the history books. There are many honest people left in this town. I believe you're one of them. In episode one, when Minnie meets Martha for the first time, I think she feels like Martha is sort of indicative of the place where Winnie's at in her career right now. She's kind of writing these fluffy pieces for like Ladies Home Journal. She doesn't think that Martha has any more depth than that. So within that first scene in the first episode, I think Winnie's surprised by the medal that uh, Martha is shown to have. I decided long ago that I will say how I feel. And if that does not conform to the president's message, so be it. And that's sort of the seeds that are sown really early on of this friendship that's gonna develop between these two women. You're good. All right, Mrs. Mitchell, right over here. Marty's relationship in the beginning with her mom, you know, I think that she looks up to her mom. She's also a little bit annoyed as well because she wants her mom to treat her like a normal kid instead of leaving her and going off and doing her thing as a public figure. You okay? I think Dean himself, he's, you know, evolving from a, a, a playboy into something perhaps a little more settled, and meeting Mo is definitely a pivotal moment for him personally. Maureen? Hi. Hey, John Dean. Hi. Hi, I am so sorry I'm late. It's not some That's fine. first day power move. <laughs> Mo, I think she thinks he's cute when he walks up, but he's 20 minutes late, and it's one of those moments where you see the person you're like, oh, I wish we could just say, let's not do this date because I can tell this is gonna go really badly. You don't exactly make the best first impression. And then I think they have a few drinks and get to talking and she's really charmed by him and thinks he's sweet and uh, sort of sees past whatever douchey exterior he was uh, leading with, unfortunately. To meet a woman as wonderful as Mo at that point in his life, you know, is all the stars seem to be aligning for him. You know, John, whatever it is they're making you do, you don't have to do it. Whilst professionally, there's all sorts going on and he's being sort of rapidly promoted and isn't wow. yet sure of exactly why or, or what that entails. I was told you wanted to see me about something. I think he's just very, very excited to be, you know, to be invited by Mitchell into this core group. You mean you want to set up an espionage unit? Well, we're talking about simple intelligence gathering. We must become snakes. Dean very quickly realizing that he's in over his head and, and realizing the kind of characters that he's got mixed up with. I think I know a guy. You know a guy? I know a guy. Oh. Uh, Liddy, Gordon Liddy. That's his name. Gordon, he wants to be recognized by the king, by Nixon. To be asked to do something that's very difficult, it, it gets Gordon a little bit closer to Mitchell. I present you Operation Gemstone. Gordon doesn't think there's a problem that he can't solve and thinking this is the way this needs to be done. There she is, machos. Our destiny. 